people actually asked us to put these bags in. Yep. So we we actually don't tend to use these zip top bags anymore because we have auto bagging, which is less wasteful and faster and lets us put the work order number on each bag. But if you do want some bags, we are selling them in packs of 100, a uh, good deal, basically half the cost you would normally pay for them. Um, pick them up, they're anti-static. Uh, they're great for storing little electronics. You can write on them with a Sharpie marker. And we have a lot in stock, so okay. grab them. Thanks, up. Okay, next up we have um, the Electromage Pixel. Oh my goodness, wait, I forgot the name of it. Can you see the back? What's the name of it? Pixel Blaze. It's the Electromage Pixel Blaze. There, there you go. Um, so this is an all-in-one ESP32 powered and driven and controlled NeoPixel or Dot Star controller and the cool thing about Pixel Blaze is they've got like really great software. And this was recommended to us by cosplayers who said they loved using these in these costumes because you can use their app or um, website to do like pixel mapping and pixel control, animation control. And it's really, really simple. And you can share animations and like load them in dynamically. Um, so it's a very small board, but it's like super packed. And this one has tons of flash and tons of RAM to be able to control like a billion neopixels if so desired uh and of course load lots of animations dynamically okay and then there's also an add-on sensor board if you like so there's a lot of gpio brought out on that pixel blaze x you know standard and if you want to add accelerometer this has i think a list 3dh um has a little mic controller has a microphone and has a line in uh so that you can use it to do um, like, oh, there's a little light sensor. So you can have it react to light sensing, to the microphone, to audio, to frequencies, um, or to motion. So like a little add-on plug board to just make sensing a lot easier that integrates directly with um, the Pixel Blaze XL. Okay, and then next up. Uh, this is still the sensor board. I think you've got twice as many. Yeah, I got okay. twice as many. Okay. And then this is the Pico version. So if you're doing like a little, a tiny project, maybe you want to tuck it in a shoe, a little wearable or a prop. Um, this is the Pico version. It's still got ESP32. It's got a little Pico chip, which I've used this chip. It's great. And then um, uh, it still has the level shifting um, and, you know, the, the button and the Wi-Fi control, the web and the app and everything. Um, but instead of having this gigantic board, it's really minimal and uh, you just give it five volts power and ground and then you have two neopixel strands or one dot star strand output righty next up okay next up we've got uh if you want to do usb host stuff on a xiao or a pico um we've got the new usb host bff which comes with a max 3421e uh, which we've got teeny usb support for so it's it's really easy to add um, USB host to Arduino or actually CircuitPython coming very soon where apparently they got merged in. We're going to do some testing and then we'll uh, do some demos. So um, here, this is just a demo showing a, um, you know, enumeration, but you can do uh, USB serial input or mass storage. So USB key or disk drive, uh, you can do keyboard or mouse. Uh, and then I think in CircuitPython, we even have MIDI device input. So um, to connect, uh, I think if you can show over here, just because it, it's confusing, because you're like, why is it a micro USB? A USB type A wasn't going to fit. So you can use an on the go cable, which they're like only a couple bucks. And you probably even have some because they're used on the Pi Zero. And then it turns it into a USB type A. Uh, and then you can also turn on and off the power so you can hard reset your USB devices, um, if desired, just uh, bridge that uh, five volt end jumper on the back. Um, I think this will be neat. You know, we do have for the RP2040, BitBang USB host, but it's, you know, it's a, I think it's tough because then you don't get to use any PIOs and you're using a whole core. This is supported by, you know, USB32, RP2040, SAMD21. So like pretty much any chip um, that has enough space, like, a, you know, a 32 4 wouldn't have the space for it. But pretty much any modern microcontroller chip can use the Max 3421, especially if it has teeny USB support. There's also kind of a well-known USB host library um, that is separately developed that people use and has a lot of um, arcade controllers supported. 
Again, sorry, so tonight, besides you, Lady, our community, our team, our customers, everybody in the open source world is... Socks. It's a DVI sock. That's right. Um, so DVI sock is based off of Ren6339, I think is his name, is a circuit, um, a circuit developer for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, or trading company. And uh, they designed this sock to demo the... Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico's DVI output, which means it can drive uh, HDMI monitors. And we have a DVI cowbell, but uh, once in a while you really just want to like um, make a very simple board that has just DVI output and you don't want to like have a whole thing majig. So this is basically a version of the sock. It's just a slight modification um, to the design, but it has the same pinouts. So uh, as you can see here, the easiest way to use it is you actually solder your Pico or your Pico W, either will work, onto the end there. And then um, it's got the eight GPIO in the bottom, uh, pins 12 through 16 are used for the three lanes of TDMS output and then the clock um, differential pair as well. Even though you're supposed to connect the five volt pin, turns out you, you don't have to, although it is brought out, you can see um, on the side, the CEC, the util, the five volt and the ground pins are separated out if you, so wish to connect to them um, and read like the EEPROM on the monitor, which again, we don't do on the RP2040. We tend to just set the output to be like 640 by 480 or whatever and just like pipe data out. Um, but it's a little low cost board, simple board, just to add DVI output for your Pico. And you know, again, solder onto the end, or you can use pin headers if you wish. Either way, you can make it plug and play. That is new products. New, 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 new.